Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today's video is going to be about using cutters that you've probably got in your boxes that you've bought. Uh, the inexpensive type of cutters, like such as, for example, Orchard Products or PME, uh, which are not necessarily a botanically correct flower but you get things like five pet, uh, six petal cutters, eight petal cutters, daisy cutters, that type of thing. So what I'm going to do is, I'm, today I'm going to do a daisy type flower uh, that's done with the six petal cutter. So I'm going to take you down to my board and show you the cutters that I'm using. Right, so the cutters that I'm using today are this one which is a six petal cutter from uh, Orchard Products uh, they do a lot of uh, different flowers you can get books associated with these cutters well that's a daisy cutter uh, which is an eight petal cutter this is a smaller version of that they usually come in sets uh, of different sizes and also this one here this is um, a PME cutter which is a six petal cutter these have the plunger cutter which if you have difficulty with getting paste out and that these come in handy because of the plunger uh, to push your petals out so the one that I'm going to use today is this uh, orchard product one I'm going to use two sizes the small one and I think this one is the uh, next but one size up from that one they do go down to really tiny ones like this one uh, which is a bit too small <laughs> uh, but we're not going to fiddle about with little things like that you need to be used to using these cutters before you start attempting anything so small. I'm just going to put a bit of white paste on my white fat on my board. Just to make sure that paste stays on the board. And you can roll it out really thin then. Now then, I've already made some centres. You've probably seen me do these before. This is a, for a daisy centre here. So it's basically, it's a ball of paste put onto, um, I think this is a 26 gauge uh, green wire that I've used for this. And then uh, I've dipped that into uh, some pollen. So I'll come back to that in a minute and I'll show you how I made that for anybody who hasn't done them before. But I've already got one made, so I want to put that on one side to dry. So I'm rolling the paste out. Get it as thin as you can. And we want two layers of cutters for this. I'm going to cut out two. Make sure that you give a really bit of pressure and sort of slide it around a little bit when you're using these plastic cutters because they're not as sharp as the metal cutters. So I'll just take that paste away. like that so we've got those two pieces so I'm just going to get rid of this paste put that back into my uh, sealable bag and then I'm going to take that and put that onto my where's me I've got a little palette knife, this that look. Palette knife, just to lift it off. These come in handy for this job, just to make sure you can get them up easily in shape without damaging them. And then I'm going to use my ball tool. I'm going to go around the edges of the petals. Just to thin the edges off. That does help slightly widen those petals as well. So I'm going to put two layers on on this particular flower. And what I like to do is to make them look a bit more realistic is if you get them onto your hand and then use your silk veining tool to put a little bit of detail into it. So this is the one here by Gem. If you've got the porcelain ones, you can use those as well, but they break very easily. This does stretch the petals slightly as well. I know it's been a while since I've posted anything, but I've been uh, doing alterations to my garden. So I've been tied up with that to uh, 
getting rid of some decking and uh, getting my garden back more like a garden. So I've put a little bit of earning into those. Just do the same thing with the other one. While I'm doing this, if anybody's got any ideas of anything they'd like to see me do, don't forget to tell me. I keep saying this in every video, but I'm not getting any... Uh, I haven't had any ideas sent just lately, so come on people, if there's something you want to see that I haven't done before, have a look through my um, all my videos and uh, see what I've done and then uh, if there's something that I haven't done on there that you'd like to see, get back and let me know. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a tiny little bit of glue in the centre of one of these, like that. And then I'm going to pop the other one on top of it, making sure that the petals go in between the petals on that layer. Like that. And then I can get the centre that I've already made into the centre of that. Pick that up. And then, now you can either add the glue underneath there or into your flower. When you're putting the uh, pollen on, make sure you don't cover the back because otherwise the glue won't uh, uh, go on there and uh, the petal won't stick. So bring the, flat, the petals up to the centre like that. I'm just going to pop that upside down for a minute while I get hold of one of these forms. If you've got any of these, these come in handy. If you haven't got anything like this, then you can make your own by... Um, uh, screwing up some foil or something like that and shaping it into uh, that sort of shape. Now what you need to do now is you need to get, uh, I use these clips to put on the back just to hold the, um, oops, bent the wire, just to hold that in place like that so that will dry. So that's holding it in place on the back and then you can put that into your foam to dry now I've got one here that's already dried but before I do anything with that I'm just going to do the centre for you just to show you how I made that so I need to get some more paste out this any odd bits of paste that you've got lying around even coloured paste if you're doing anything like that you can use because as long as it's going to be covered with the uh, pollen that will be fine so I've got a small ball of paste here roll that into a ball and I'm just doing a simple one here I'm not doing the uh, I'm see, trying to see if I've got a piece of wire that I can use that's strong enough for this being small flowers you don't need a strong piece of wire 26 will be fine What's that one? I don't think I've got one there. Yeah. So what I'm going to do with this, I'm just going to put a tiny little hook on the end. It wants to be really small, does this? Like that. So if I put that against my finger, if you can see how small I've made that. Because the thin wires are a bit easier for you to bend. So pop that into your paste. Bring that down into it like that and then bring your paste over the top just to cover that up and then just sort of squash it down so you've got more of a cushion shape. Now that's about the right size is that for what I've done there. Now ideally the best thing to do is to let this dry before you do anything else at it but because I haven't got a spare one made up and dried I forgot to do one I'm going to uh, do this straight away while it's soft but you'd need to, if you're doing it soft you need to leave them probably a couple of days to dry out so put your glue on making sure you get it all over the top and the sides but not underneath because that'll stop your flower petals from sticking to it if you 
get it on there and then here I've got my pollen um, for anybody who is watching for the first time basically this is either ground rice or semolina uh, put into a, a tub or a pot or anything like that and then uh, shake in some uh, whatever colour you want your pollen to be the powder into your paste and then you've got your pollen because basically if you buy the shop bought pollen that's all it is and this is a hell of a lot cheaper it costs pennies to make that rather than pounds right so put that to one side to dry and then you've got your dried flour so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make, make a little calyx for this so what I'm going to do now just get my glue out of the way get the cutter to the side move all my little bits away and tidy up a little bit as I go along which is not like me as you can see I have a lot of stuff around here <laughs> they have to be handy so I can get hold of them when I'm doing videos so I'm just going to turn that over onto that side uh, and I spilt some um, varnish on there so I need to get that off but I'll do that at a later pe period of time I'm just going to move that flower out of the way for the time being and then I need some green paste. I should have some in here. Now this has got a little bit dry, so I'm just gonna get a piece out of the centre of that. If you find that it's gone a bit dry, because I haven't done any videos for a while, so it's been left a while. So even when it's packaged up, it can go a little bit dry and I've seen people throwing it away just because it feels a bit hard on the outside people throw it away so rather than do that all you need to do is to knead it if it feels like it's got any pieces in it roll it out like that get it really thin and any dried pieces that you've got with them will be crushed into your paste like that and then just knead it again and that brings it back so you're not wasting anything then so I've got a small ball of paste there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the largest um, Mexican hat hole in my board there I'll just put a bit of fat round there then just press your paste into that ball there and then roll your paste out over it this is a lot easier than trying to do a Mexican hat back for something that's small like this. It's a very fiddly. And unless you've got very small fingers and you're good with tiny things, which I'm not, my big fingers wouldn't handle anything as small as that. So if you make sure that you take it off your board, as I've told you before, if you're using the groove board for doing grooves when you're doing things like petals and leaves and that, always turn them over so you can see where your Mexican hat or your groove is before you cut it out in order to be able to get it in the middle. I've seen people demonstrating and not doing that. This is the right, correct way of doing it. Where's my small cutter gone? There. And the advantage with these is that, uh, particularly with the uh, Archer product ones, is they've got a hole in the centre so you can see where your Mexican hat is. So if you just place it over so you get that in the centre and then cut your that piece out like that. Just gently pull that away. There we are. And then, if I can find my small ball tool, I can't find my small one, there's a medium one there, that'll do. So, where have I put me? Just get that out of the way, I can't see what I'm doing there, there it is. Get your... So basically I'm using the same cutter for the back. It's not botanically correct, we're not aiming for that on these. Just... A filler flower to go in amongst your other flowers and it's something that doing it this way it's very quick because you don't have to worry about the detail on it and I mean if you're doing a spray of flowers for a wedding cake or a birthday cake or anything like that people are looking at the flowers as a whole they're not going to inspect the elements to see whether they're botanically correct unless it's somebody that's um, 
an expert botanist might do but there again you don't know who you're going to get deer so what I'm going to do now is get that onto my hand and turn that over so that the Mexican hat is in between my fingers there get my flower back and then I want my glue which I moved over there and then just glue over the back of that like that turn your flower up twist your wire into the paste in the middle whoops didn't mean to do that get it in as much in the centre as you can there that's it that'll do and then bring that up underneath your flower turn it upside down so you can see it, and then just bring your calyx down onto the back like that and then you can just adjust if you just roll it between your finger and your thumb like that just to give you a bit more of a back on there one of those sepals is screwed up a little bit under there so we'll just pull that out a little bit that's it it's better it's gone back in place that one's gone a bit skew with you can just spend a little bit of time just making sure you've got your that part of your back in in place there we are so that's onto the back of there so now you can let that dry and the next thing i'm going to do with this because it's a white flower rather than just leaving it as it is uh, i'm going to uh, dust that if I've got one out somewhere, I should have it. No, that's the wrong one. That's Snowflake. That's a plain one. I'm just looking for a white luster dust. There we are. This one's called Silver Snow from Edible Art. There's a lot of people that have watched me before know I use uh, mostly their colours. It's a lot easier to deal with one make than it is to deal with loads of different ones. But for your benefit, a white luster, whatever make you're using... They do do a few different, quite a few uh, different ones in there. They've got a bigger range than most people have edible art, so, and they're up in the northeast here in the UK, uh, Newcastle way. So, uh, and I've dealt with them for a lot of years when I was teaching at college. I'm just trying to find myself a clean brush, and I've mislaid it somewhere. Let's see if we can find another one. some petals off yes I have now there's some colour on that we don't want that one see if we can find one that's a bit cleaner let's have a look at this one now that's got some dark colour on it as well uh, since I can't find a clean one uh, If you, if you haven't got a lot of brushes, you need to be able to clean your brushes. So one way of cleaning your brushes, oh there it is, I've got a dusting bag here. You can either use corn flour or some um, icing sugar. Obviously corn flour is a lot cheaper. Onto your board and then just work your brush in the corn flour. And that brings the colour out. Oh that one's not so bad. Let's just have a look. That's all right, they've got most of the colour out there, so I've knocked that over a little bit. So we'll just get some of that white luster onto my kitchen roll. And then... I've knocked a petal off when I knock those over, so you'll have to ignore that. And then just gently dust your petals with the white luster you're probably better off starting at the center and working outwards with this because they're very gentle but very gentle touch with these because they've been daisy type flowers they're very easily knocked off 
you can if you want to just a little bit on the back as well and then normally that still wetches the back on that so I am, I'm not going to dust that but you can do dust that as well with a, um, a green sort of a mid green I would say for that and there we have it a simple um, daisy flower so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another one I've got one with an eight petal cutter here and I'm going to use that soft center that I've done because this is quite a short video I'll just run through that as well and show you how to use that type of cutter so we'll get some more white paste now just turn that board back over so this time this cutter is an eight petal daisy I need some more white fat on that there we are that's better don't be frightened of getting your paste thin as well uh, I mean I sent a message to somebody that asked for the pin on one of the groups about a rosy she just made it for the first time and like I said in my comments there it's very stretchy is flower paste so you can get it as thin as you want and the thinner it is the more realistic it looks I know that you can break petals off it depends what kind of flowers you're doing but you just got you get used to handling them and uh, even the best of us including myself as you've noticed I break things don't be frightened of that because it's all part of the learning process and as long as you're not entering it in a competition I'm just going to cut two of those out this will make a different type of daisy to the last one that I've just done pull the paste away now I didn't have to use the plunger on this because it didn't stick in there so we've been quite lucky with that one get those onto my tool pad and then I should have a small ball tool somewhere but I can't see where it is in my tools there it'd be knocking about somewhere so if you like me usually you find that they're right under your nose and you just fall over them when you're not looking for them but when you want them they're not there just go around each of the petals the same as I've done before I'm going to do this one quickly I'm not going to bother veining the petals on this but I'm just going to show you another thing that you could do if you're doing a flower like that what you can do is to curl your petals in by pulling from the outside in that also widens your petals and it cups them as well so you get a bit more of a, a realistic look with your these type of flowers like that and then again where's my glue gone there and I knocked it off that's why you need to make sure you screw your top on whenever you're not using it little bit of glue in the center there and then we'll pop that one on top with the petals in between the layer below like that a little bit of glue in the center there and then the center of the daisy into that and bring that up now because I've cut those petals up already I can probably leave that but what I'll do is I'll put that upside down and 
bend that over and put that into your if I bring my foam over like that and pop it into the side like that with it upside down and you can shape your petals to come up then if you leave it upside down it'll stay like that so I'll just bring a couple of these over if I can find any that I've, I've actually not broken the petals off that's one there I've only got one petal off so these are simple daisy uh, flowers that I've done that you could put in as a filler flower so I hope you've enjoyed the video and you'll come back and see me in the next one don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well it's free to subscribe um, I don't charge with some of my uh, with my videos like some people do don't forget to like and if you've got any comments about anything whether you've enjoyed it not or you've got a comment about anything or anything that you'd like to see me do then please get in touch and uh, leave your uh, comments in the comments below and look forward to seeing you in the next video so take care stay safe